excuse you. What's going on? Kenan here from Camp Kenan, and we are hanging out with Clyde Peeling from Reptile Land Zoo in Allenwood, Pennsylvania. And today, he's going to bring me through the paces with a Pakistani cobra. And we've spent time with this animal a few years ago. I've missed it. Not really. This makes my heart a flutter. Stick around. This is a high energy cobra. This is Camp Kenan. So a few years ago, Clyde and I did a TV show for Fuel TV, and uh, in that we had used the Pakistani cobras, and uh, man, these animals are high energy, and uh, nothing like you know a rattlesnake that you'll find in the United States. The, the elapids are quite a different animal altogether, aren't they? As you know, the elapids include the coral snakes, and yep. the mambas, and the crates, and the cobras, and the cobras are the ones that most people remember. Yes. Uh, these snakes are not nearly as dangerous, in my opinion, as a big diamondback rattlesnake because a rattlesnake can strike straight out, open the mouth 180 degrees, the fangs are standing almost straight out, and he stabs you and pulls back for a second uh, opportunity. In the case of an elapid, like a cobra, they have these little short fangs in the front of the upper jaw. They're aptly enough called front fang snakes and they generally will grab a prey animal, hold on momentarily, pump the venom in through the hollow things, and, and then either, many times they'll just hang on, but if, if there's any threat from the prey animal, they just let go and follow the animal, smelling with their tongue. Okay. So this is one of over 20 species of cobras. This one comes from Pakistan, and this is the traditional snake charmers snake. Okay. Um, snakes can't hear, but if you get a freshly caught cobra, you sit down in front of it, you begin to play your flute and sway slightly while you're playing, a freshly caught cobra at least will be so intent upon watching the, the movement that he'll follow that back and forth. Now, now what happens when it's not fresh? Like they just lose that, that well, behavior? The, some, I had one of these on Jay Leno, and Jay was fearless. And I told him during rehearsal, don't get in too close, because if you're in too close, the snake then realizes the bluff isn't working. And the bluff, I mean the, the hood, is the attempt by the snake to make himself look bigger and more dangerous than he really is. And when they strike, as we'll probably see here in a moment, they lunge forward, they hiss, and very seldom even open their mouth. He is smart enough to know we're too big to eat, we're potentially dangerous to him, and his, his intent here is to... Oh, wow. So this is the, the snake charmer snake. All that is bluff. He's just trying to keep me at a distance. If I move in too close, he's going to head over toward the cameraman. And I don't think my cameraman would like that because Tom happens to be deathly afraid of snakes. Um, <laughs> I have a healthy respect of the animal. So, so there's two of us here, and you can see he is, he's definitely watching you, but what a beautiful animal. And these animals here, uh, how long have you had this particular snake? Oh, look at that. Uh, this snake was raised here from a hatchling. I don't know without looking at the record card, okay. but it could be three to five years old. Gotcha. Yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> Good job, man. Well, that was uneventful. I didn't even need my hook. I mean, the last time we had him out, it got a little hairy there for a second. I'll tell you that. That was a few years back. But, you know, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and showing us behind the scenes here of uh, Reptile Land. Reptile Land. Reptile Land. Reptil -land. Reptil -land. <laughs> I have a hard time, guys. Sometimes, you know, a little hollow in between the ears. <laughs> but anyway, we're hanging out here with Clyde Peel at Reptile Land. Just wanted to show you a little Pakistani cobra. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again real soon on another episode.